everybody. I'm Kelly Hansen. I head up our data science and insights team. We're involved with pretty much anything and everything data related and how we can derive insights from that data. Uh, some examples of that include media performance reporting and analysis like we do for Native Shoes and Luxco's many brands. It includes email and loyalty analysis like we do for Dave & Buster's. Um, also includes A-B testing and optimization like we're doing for Dell or web analytics implementation like we're doing for Mazda. It can also include customer predictive modeling um, like we've done for Jiffy Lube. And finally, just a myriad of ad hoc analyses uh, like we're doing for Purina. So just to, just to name drop a few, those aren't all of the clients, but many of, many of our wonderful partners who are in the room. Um, we've heard today from Liz on our media strategies, and we just heard from Angie about the website. Um, you're also going to hear from Richard about email. And one of the things that all of those have in common is that we're using data to optimize the experience. So I'm going to talk a little bit about um, how we're using data and how preference centers can be a key um, area of data that we can use in their marketing. So why have a preference center? Um, Forrester notes that uh, US online adults say that they're more likely to purchase from brands that share content that interests them. And we hear from McKinsey and company that uh, personalization is driving better outcomes. But we also know that it's becoming harder and harder to capture data because of increased privacy concerns, the demise of the third party cookie that we heard about. Um, so that's where it really comes into play in having a preference center because it can help with the data source um, for the marketing activities. So what are the benefits of having a preference center? As I mentioned, it's collecting that data. Um, as we aren't able to capture as much of the data as we want, uh, digitally, as we had been in the past, as the third-party cookies go away, as servers are blocking some of the tracking technology, a preference center is a good way to capture data about your customer because they're specifically providing it to you. Um, so it gets beyond that privacy concern because they're telling you that they want you to use this information. Second is to deepen uh, connection with your customers um, by, by asking them for information about how they want to receive uh, messages from you or what kind of content they want to receive, it can help to build that and deepen that connection. Um, one of the things that Diane mentioned, I think, in our first panel session today was don't ask for something that you're not going to be able to change. And that's the same way with this, is that you don't want to be asking for information that you're not going to use because that could have the opposite effect in terms of deepening that connection. Finally, there's so many messages out um, that people are receiving. I saw an inbox last night that had thousands and thousands of unread emails. Um, because of how many messages there are out there, it's important to be able to use this preference center data to surgically target your marketing, to really break through the noise. So how do we do it? Um, preference centers aren't a new topic. Um, they've been around for a while, but we're not seeing all of our clients implement them. So we wanted to hit on a couple of the keys to implementing a successful preference center. Our friends at Forrester refer to these three areas as having heart, spine, and skin um, in their anatomy of a preference center article. Having heart, delivering that customer value, really showing the customer that you appreciate um, them and you want to have their opinion on what they want to receive. Having spine, that backbone of your preference center, is having a centralized area where you can really store your actionable data to make sure that you can use it uh, in your marketing. And finally, being user friendly. That's the skin, the outward appearance. Make sure that your customers, when they're interacting with you in their preference center, that um, it's a friendly user experience. So as I mentioned, that first one, delivering on customer value. And we're showing some of the examples here that we've done with partners, um, but that, that customer value of making sure that your customers are being heard. Um, for instance, telling you that I want to, how I want to receive my communication tells me that you care and that you're going to get me the message the way that I want to receive it. Or telling you about the kind of content that I want to receive tells me that I'm going to receive information that I really want to hear about and I'm not going to have to weed through those thousands of emails because I know that the messages that I'm going to get from you are going to be relevant. Finally, a lot of times when a customer is getting to that preference center, it's because they want to unsubscribe. 
Um, even if they're going to go, which they might, it's valuable to get information from them at that point because you're finding out what did we do that, that they didn't want to hear. Whether it impacts that individual customer, you can use that information for future customers to understand, are we sending too many emails? Are we not sending them the right content? And it can still have an impact with that individual customer because you're asking that information and they might re-decide that they want to stay after all. So the, the, the spine, the backbone, the infrastructure of your preference center. You want to make sure that you're setting yourselves up for success. If you have different areas where you're collecting information about your customers, make sure that you're having that all in a centralized area. Having multiple preference centers is not going to be beneficial in your overall strategy because you want to make sure that you have consistent messaging and that you're um, really reaching out to them when they need to be heard. Um, also think about how you're going to use that data. You want to make sure that it's connected to your marketing system so that you can action on it. It's not, it's, it can be information that you can take in and you can analyze, but if you're not connected to be able to impact your outbound marketing, then it's not going to actually give you that return that you're hoping to receive. Also think about this and think about the other data sources that you might have. So your preference center data is critical because your customers are giving that to you firsthand. But think about the other information you have, like maybe your web analytics. You might not be able to track as much with that, but if you can connect the dots, and with your implementation, you're capturing the necessary data to connect between the information that your customers are giving you in the preference center, as well as what they've done on the website. That just enhances your ability to understand what they're doing and provide additional context. Just be careful not to use too much of the, um, the information that they intentionally didn't provide to show them and end up appearing creepy. You want to make sure that um, you're paying attention to what they've given you and then using the other information to enhance. And so then finally, that, that user-friendly. Um, making sure that as your customers are coming to the site and giving you information about themselves, make it easy for them to do so. Um, if you have tons of questions that you're asking for all at once, you might not get them to give you that information. You want to make it easy for them to see what you're wanting to get um, and what the value is for them to give it in a way that's easy for them to do. Um, don't ask for everything, but also don't be afraid to stretch a little bit and ask for a little bit more than you might have than just asking for what kind of communication channel and what content. Think, uh, think a little bit outside of the box of what you can provide as long as you're going to be able to deliver on that after the fact. So let's recap. Um, how to implement a successful preference center. Delivering customer value. Ask yourself, are you asking for information from your customers that they're going to see as providing value? Not just how you're going to see it as providing value, but will your customers actually see it as being valuable to give it to you? And are you able to follow through on your promises to use that information? Again, don't ask for information you can't use because that can have the opposite effect where they're not going to feel heard. Second is to centralize your actionable data. Action, uh, actionable being a key in that. So are you collecting your data in a centralized place? Are you considering additional web analytics that can enhance your preference center data? And is your tech connected so that you can actually action on that data that you collect? And finally, being user friendly. Are your forms easy for customers to fill out? Are they intuitive? Are you only asking for information that you'll be able to use? Um, those are the information are related to our preference center. Um, Email is one of those key sources that uses data that comes from a preference center. So I'm going to hand this off to Richard Flores to talk about some of that for us.